Hey, hello there guys. Today we're going to be building something new, fresh, hot off the press from Wave here and my very first Votoms kit. It is the, maybe a little bit more obscure one, the Standing Tortoise Mark II. Now I know Bandai makes some Votoms kits as well too and I assume probably someday I'll build one of those. Uh, those look pretty nice. But in the meantime, you know, Votoms is not something that I've ever really been all that into and a lot of the designs don't really do a whole lot for me but I wanted to check some of them out. So this is a new one out from Wave and let's go ahead and check it out, see what it's like. So here is the Standing Tortoise Mark II. Alright, so starting off on the front here, we got this very cool old school style illustration from none other than Kunio Okawara, the Gundam designer as well too, so very cool artwork here on the front if you guys are a fan of that particular style. So, also a very cool and cute box. It's pretty thick as you can see, but it's a very like a small size box. It's an interesting dimensions for this box, but anyway, yeah, it's very cute. Here on the bottom you can see this is a 1 35th scale, so I'm not sure exactly how big that is in terms of Votom stuff, but I imagine it's probably going to be about the same size as like an HG Gundam kit. Here on the side of the box you can see what this kit is going to look like when it's all painted up. Very fresh looking by the way. I think most people who work with Votom's kits probably going to want to weather it a little bit as that's kind of like the style of them, but it's interesting to see it all perfectly clean like that. Very cool. So here's what it looks like front and back, and if we go to the other side we got a little detail here. The missile pods up over the shoulder, this sort of missile launcher, what are they calling that here? Handy missile launcher, so I guess it's sort of handy and also sort of play on words because it's a handheld one kind of thing, a little Japanese uh, maybe mistranslation and or joke kind of thing going on there with that. But yeah, really interesting weapon there for this. Let's go ahead and get it popped open, let's see. Based on the size of the box, I'm guessing our runners are also going to be kind of small for this one, but got a handful of those. Let's first take a look at the instructions down here. So we got a few things down there at the bottom of the box including some foil stickers here. So I'm not sure if there's any water slides included or not. It looks like maybe not at the moment but here's what the foil stickers look like for basically the cameras and things. And for the instruction manual it's just got the big photograph of the kit right there on the front. On the back the paint guide here for you so it's got that all there in Japanese. Uh, the recommended colors for this if you want to stick with that. Opening up to the inside, it just gets right down to business here with the instructions. So it just goes through that and kind of no frills here. You got a couple of different hand options there for that, mounting weapons, final assembly, and that's kind of it. But then we do also have this here too, Standing Tortoise Mark II, another illustration, I guess, from uh, Kunio Okawara. This one, I guess, is sort of a high mobility type sort of thing. It's got some Japanese kanji there, but uh, without translating that, I'm just going to guess it's a high mobility type or something like that. But also, it looks very cool here, and then on the back side, another illustration of that. So, or it's got a kind of mine layer vibe as well, too, doesn't it? So, interesting. And that's it. So, nothing on the inside. I don't know what that's really for, then, just kind of an extra little thing. I don't believe we have any parts in here to actually make this variant. That would be cool if we did, though. But maybe this is uh, an idea of what's maybe going to be coming out in the future. That would be cool. All right, anyway, for now, let's go ahead and check out the runners. All right, so first off, we've got a polycap runner here in a light bluish gray. Quite a lot of polycaps here. The runner A here in our main light green color is just going to have some armor pieces as well as this little antenna piece. Be careful of that. Runner B, also some more pieces in light green, including a bunch of hand parts on there. Runner C, just a little runner here with a couple of little pieces, so be careful not to lose those little guys. And then some more little green parts here on the D-Runner, and we've got two of these. Runner E is then switching it up to our light blue color here, and you can see there's some nice little rivet details and things around on the kit that do look like they're going to be pretty fun to paint up. Runner F is some more of that light blue color, including our cockpit piece inside there, so you can see some nice detail inside as well. And then some more of that light blue color here on the G-Runner, we've got two of these. Runner H then switches it up to this nice dark maroon color. But with Runner I, we're back to our light green color here for a bit with a couple pieces on there. And Runner J as well, some more in light green. We've got two of this J Runner. Runner K is going to be some parts for what looks like our feet. Runner L is more parts here in light green. Runner M is back to a bluish gray, but it's a little bit different from the bluish gray we had before. This is a little bit darker. It looks to be basically like parts for the weapons. So we've got two of this M Runner. Runner N, then switching it back up again to our dark maroon color for the tips of some missiles and things. Runner O, our bluish gray parts here for the handy missile launcher. 
And finally, runner Q is just a couple parts here in that light green color, and we've got two of this one. So there you have it guys, small little box, but packed with quite a few parts in there. I think this is going to be a really fun kit. I'm expecting probably a lot of seam lines on it, but I'm not really necessarily surprised by that. I think either way, it's going to be a pretty fun one. So let's go ahead and get it put together and see how it looks. Alright guys, so here is our little standing tortoise all built up, and I, it's pretty much as you're seeing it, including almost everything that is included with this kit. So there's not going to be a whole lot of accessories and option parts and things like that. I will show you what little sort of option accessories that we have here in just a second, but basically that's it. So it looks great. It's a quite solid little kit as well too, as you guys will see. And also while there are a lot of seam lines on there, there is some really nice detail on there as well too. So definitely wide open for customization if you guys want to add more details or obviously if you want to add some weathering on this, I think it's going to look really nice when it's all weathered up, painted and weathered and all that. It's going to look fantastic. But you know, even just straight out the box, if you want to just do a little bit of panel lining on there, throw some top coat on it, it's going to look pretty nice. So let's go ahead and check it out here in a little bit closer detail. So yeah, our option parts for this kit are basically going to consist of a hand for the most part. So basically if you wanted to have a closed fist on both sides, you can do that. Otherwise, you have your trigger finger hand for holding onto the rocket launcher here. And you do have a couple of option parts for that, basically to change the angle of the wrist. So you have the wrist at like bent at a slight angle, but you can swap out the piece for the wrist there for one of those. So if you want to have it just straight, just a kind of straight wrist like what you have for the closed fist, you have this piece. If you want to have it a little bit more bent, you have this piece, or you, if you want to have it really far bent, you have this piece. But the problem is you have to basically completely take apart that hand in order to swap out the wrist piece. So it's a little bit annoying how they made that. But if you want to take this apart and then uh, reassemble this with a different wrist piece in at a different angle, you can do that. Otherwise, also for the eyes, the manual says to put these pieces in here, which are just opaque green pieces in for the eyes, and then you're supposed to cover them up with these stickers. I have not done that because as you can see inside the eyes, there's actually some really nice detail and it just feels like a waste to cover those up with opaque pieces and then stickers. And probably what I'll want to do is then later, whenever I get around to painting this kit, is actually paint the inside detail in there and then put clear parts in over the top. If I were to put these parts in first and then I want to take them out later, I'll have to drill them out from the back and then I'll have to destroy that detail in there. So I don't want to do that. So I just opted to leave these out for now, but just know that if you guys want to use these and you want to use the foil stickers for the eyes, you can use those and it would probably look fine, but I want to go for some clear parts later on. But while we're here, let's just go ahead and open this up. So first of all, this uh, cockpit opens up like that. And while it's 135th scale, I gotta say it does look a little bit large, slightly large for 135th scale. But anyway, this kit is in 135th scale, just as a reminder. You also have this part here. The top part does also slide down and then you just have that little uh, sort of window into the top there. As far as other points of articulation, basically you have some just rotation between the top and bottom half of the kit. These uh, missile launchers here on the back are just on a couple of pegs, actually on a ball joint, uh, this part right here, but you can't really change that. Uh, as far as changing the angle, you just rotate that around so you can have them stored back in like that. The little flaps above the shoulder, of course, can move up and down. You can bring the arm out to about 90 degrees out to the side, which is not too bad. You got some rotation there at the bicep. Your elbow joint is going to give you about 90 degrees there. The wrist is not on a ball joint, just a straight peg, so you can just rotate that around. This flap here on the back of the wrist also moves like that. All your skirting armor can move up and down, even the back skirt all the way back here as well too. And then this thruster belt here on the backpack also you can change the angle of that. I feel like it's not pushed in all the way because you're seeing like a little bit too much of that ball joint I feel like, but I've tried to push it pretty hard and I don't think it's gonna go in any farther than that. So I guess that's the extent of how much that'll push into there. For the legs, you can get them out to the side really nice and far out like that. And then up to the front, about 90 degrees perpendicular to the kit, like so around here on the back of the leg, you have this little flap which can move up and down like that. Basically for when you bend the knee, you can move that a little bit out of the way. Although they're still only gonna get about 90 degrees bend there at the knee, unfortunately. This little bit of armor down here also moves up and down above the ankle armor. And then for our foot itself, you can move that to the side pretty nicely because of the way that the foot kind of comes apart in there. 
So you should be able to get some really good uh, poses down just on the ground with those ankles being really nicely articulated. And you can also go to the front and to the back a little bit like that. And then up underneath the feet, you got some detail there as well too. For a quick size comparison, here is how it's gonna stack up next to your standard 144 scale size HG Gundam kit. So you can see they're right about the same height, but just obviously the standing tortoise being a much more bulkier design there. So obviously guys, with a kit like this, you're not gonna expect it to do any sort of like acrobatic, super dynamic poses or anything like that. But honestly, it, the articulation is actually really quite nice for what this is, just for the design. I think it is pretty nicely articulated for just this really heavy looking ground, you know, grunt looking mecha, I think it does actually pose really quite nice. The articulation is quite good. And like I said, the kit is a really solid feeling kit as well too. There's a couple pieces that uh, maybe feel a little bit loose. So you might want to put some glue on. And overall, you don't need any glue with this kit. I will also say it's completely a snap uh, fit kit. You don't need any glue. That said, of course, there are some seam lines around uh, on different parts. That should go without saying. There's obviously some mold lines around here and there as well too. Uh, so definitely it could use some work as far as just like kind of, you know, standard modeling work just to fix it up, uh, get rid of some, getting rid of the mold lines, seam lines, some painting, maybe some weathering, all that, which should certainly make the kit shine. But as far as just like the kit straight out of the box, I got to say it is really quite nice, quite impressive for just this little kind of chunky little boy. So it's a really cool kit. Definitely check it out, guys, if you're interested. I'm really uh, happy with this. It's my first time building any Votoms kit. I'll definitely have to check out one of the Votoms kits from Bandai at some point. If you guys have any recommendations, maybe let me know if there's one that uh, you've built and you particularly liked. Let me know and uh, I'll try to check out one of those uh, Bandai Votoms kits sometime in the near future as well too. But uh, for now, I gotta say, uh, for this kit here from Wave, very nice. So hopefully they will go ahead and make that Mind Layer variant as well too. That'd be really cool if they end up coming out with that one. I'll definitely look forward to building that. But for now, guys, let me know if you do have any other further questions or comments down in the comment section below. If you guys want to check out some different Wave kits or different mecha models in general from Kurbukia or Bandai or whatever, obviously we've got loads of those at USA Gundam store. So check the link to USA Gundam store and the coupon code for you guys to use are down there in the video description down below. Thanks so much for liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated as well too. So really appreciate all your guys' support. Until next time, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.